Hello and welcome everybody. My name is Angel Elisastegui and I am the Director of Field Marketing for AVID in the Americas. Today I am honored to be joined by a couple of my favorite AVID colleagues who will be taking you through the main part of our presentation. From Los Angeles, we have Michael Krulik, who is our Product Evangelist for Media Composer. And from Aberdeen in Scotland, we have Craig Wilson, who is our Product Evangelist for Media and, and Cloud. So let's take a quick look at what we're going to cover today, today's webinar. To begin with, we're going to have a quick overview of the key collaborative solutions which Avid has today to really empower teams working together in a broadcast environment to plan, assign tasks, share content, and also review media, whether they are working at home, on location, or in the office. As we all know these days, there are so many more options for where we can be when we are doing our work. After this short introduction, we will then have a demonstration of the solutions for Michael, from Michael and Craig. And they are going to show how remote and distributed teams really can work together. Once this is done, we will, have, we will then have a live question and answer session. So please feel free to submit your questions as we go. And talking of questions, please use the Q&A feature in Zoom to submit them. I am sure you all pretty familiar with how this works these days, but just hit that button at the bottom of the screen to send in your questions. We have got AVID specialists who will be monitoring the questions as they come in and answering them. But we will also ask some of the questions live at the end too. With that, let me, let me now hand it over to Michael and Craig to kick off the presentation and the demonstration. Great, Angel. Thank you very much. Uh, so hi, everybody. As Angel says, my name's uh, Craig Wilson. I'm with AVID based here in, in Scotland. And with me today uh, is going to be my colleague in Los Angeles, Michael Krulik. Michael, do you want to say hello? Hello. Thanks for joining everyone. Greetings from beautiful downtown Burbank, California. Great. Thanks a lot, Michael. So what are some of the things that we are going to take a look at today? Well, we're really going to look at how um, Avid Media Central and Media Composer really can work together to address a whole variety of different use cases when it comes to what we probably class as broadcast post-production. So we're looking at things like, you know, show production, you know, highlights creation, maybe some reality show um, things as well. And there's a variety of different um, solutions that we're going to look at in in the course of uh, the next little while. Now, of course, one of the things that um, is really important these days is getting media into a system. There's a variety of different ways, of course, that that can be done, whether it's you know, using a file um, ingest um, software, but growing in importance, of course, is the use of IP-based contribution. So we're actually going to take a little look at a product called Media Central Stream, and that's really all about doing ingest from IP streams, whether they're coming from, you know, RTMP or, or SRT sources, and really providing a really simple way of getting these sources directly into your AVID production environment in the right codec and in the right way that you can then begin to, begin to work with this. So we'll take a little look um, at Media Central Stream. But really at the heart of the demonstration we're going to do today is going to be what's called Media Central Collaborate. Now, Media Central Collaborate, relatively new for us, so maybe you haven't seen it before. It's an app as part of Media Central Cloud UX, and we're going to spend a little bit of time looking at that, which is a web-based tool to allow me to, to do some of these things. And it really is all about planning, uh, assigning tasks, tracking projects, and also about making it easy, really easy to share content. And that really applies whether you're in the office or you're outside of the office. And there's also a mobile app as well that we'll also take a little look at a bit later on. So what are some of the things which Media Central Collaborate can do? So it's available in Media Central Cloud UX that I mentioned, which is web-based, but it's also available as a panel inside of Media Composer and also inside some of the Adobe Creative Cloud products. So in Premiere Pro, After Effects, 
um, and Photoshop. And it really is all about just enabling that team collaboration, really regardless of location. And because, of course, it includes that After Effects and Photoshop uh, integration, you can, of course, bring in your, you know, your graphics specialists into the workflow and really make it easy for them to access the content they need and to share that back. We're going to focus today on Media Central and Media Composer. I also mentioned that there is an app for Media Central uh, Collaborate as well on iOS, and that includes things like notifications. So, you know, you're out somewhere, you can see you've been notified about you know, a new job that perhaps you want to, to do. You can also update the status of jobs um, as you go as well. So you can do a little bit of review and, and approval um, also. So we're also going to take a look um, at that because Collaboration, when we talk about it now, is about collaboration on the go. It's not necessarily about just collaboration in the office. That's still really important. But of course, we're seeing much more in the way of remote and, and distributed teams um, these days. And we don't get much more remote and distributed than, than me here in Scotland and Michael over in Los Angeles. But we're going to show you how we can work together uh, to do certain things. So talking about Media Composer, you know, I'm sure a lot of you are very familiar with, with Media Composer and obviously how it works within a media central environment. You know, it really is about collaboration without boundaries. You know, you can have role-based um, layouts, for example, in something like Media Composer and um, Enterprise, very secure. You can have user rights and permissions management um, as well. Um, and also, it can be about fast turnaround workflows. Now, we're not really going to talk about news today, but it can be used, of course, in that kind of newsroom um, environment um, as well. The key today is all about collaboration and about having what we would cl class as, you know, really a, a single solution. So Media Central Cloud UX and Media Composer really working together very, very closely. And of course, everything underpinned by our avid nexus and um, shared storage um, as well. Okay, the good news is that's enough of the slides uh, for the moment. Uh, we'll maybe come back to a few summary slides as we get uh, a little bit later on. Um, because what we're now going to go into is we're now going to begin to do um, a little bit of a live demonstration of how Media Central Collaborate and Media Composer can work, uh, can work together. So I'm just going to come out of the presentation and I'm going to switch across to Media Central Cloud UX. Now, Media Central Cloud UX runs in a web browser. You can see here it's running in Google Chrome on my uh, local machine. So of course it works on Windows and of course it works on a Mac. I'm just gonna make this full screen so I've got a little bit more screen real estate to, 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 to use. Now, if you haven't seen Media Central Cloud UX before, really what it's about is about enabling teams to have access to the different systems and the different content that they need. Now, whether you're working you know, in a, a broadcast environment where perhaps I want to do viewing of media, perhaps some logging, some editing, that's all possible here. Or you're working in a news environment as well. It also has lots of applications there um, too. The key thing is it's web-based. So you're able to access it securely, really from any location. You don't need to install anything on your local machine um, other than having you know, um, Media Central Cloud UX through a Chrome, uh, Chrome browser. And of course, you're uh, logging in uh, remotely, either using something like Active Directory or even beginning to look now at things like you know, multi-factor authentication uh, as part of it as well. And what Media Central Cloud UX features is along the top, we have a range of different apps, depending on what your workflow is. So, for example, here, the first one I'm looking at is the Browse app. And the, basically, the Browse app lets me navigate through and find media that I've got in any of my systems. And you can see here, I've actually got multiple systems I can access because Media Central Cloud UX and Media Central supports what we class as multi-site workflows. So, you know, you could have multiple sites in your system perhaps in the same city or perhaps distributed, and you can still go in and you can access content and you can work with it. We can also search. So Media Central Cloud UX has um, great search functionality, allowing you to search super quick uh, across any of your systems. You can search on any of the metadata um, in the systems. You can have search favorites. You can also have a search history as well. We also have ingest tools. So here inside of Media Central um, uh, Cloud UX, I have the Media Central Ingest tool. This would allow me to upload you know, media that, that's perhaps coming from a camera card or media I have on my desktop that perhaps I also want to, to bring into the system as well. But the main app that we're going to look at today is what's called Media Central Collaborate, and this is it here. So 
One of the important things about Media Central Cloud UX is we have a lot of tools all combined into one application, okay? It's running through a browser. So I'm not needing to, you know, leap out of one thing into another to, to go off and to, to do things. A lot of stuff I can do here. And a lot of different roles can be done here as well, whether you're someone who's working on the planning desk or the assignment desk, or you're you know, someone who's working as a, a logger, or you're someone who's working as an assistant who wants to pull things uh, together here. A lot of it you can do. Now, one of the roles that um, you know, I didn't mention there is about doing ingest. And that's what we're gonna start off by having a, a quick look at, because in an ingest environment, I mentioned earlier on about Media Central Stream. So let me just j jump out just now and go into Media Central Stream and let's have a quick look at that. So you can see here in Media Central Stream, I actually have four channels of ingest that I can use, okay? So I've got um, some channels. You can see a couple of things that are coming in at the moment. And just to show you how simple it is, that basically what I can do into an individual channel is I can select to route the channel. And then I have a bunch of templates that are already set up to go and access the different um, ingest sources that I have. And if I, for example, if I select this one and hit route, what you see here is um, it's connecting to uh, the source. And it's in. And what we're actually looking at here, let's take my phone, is actually just a shot um, looking out on my garden. You know, so here it is here. Um, if I bring it around, you should be able to see that, uh, that that's what we're doing. And that's because I've just enabled an SRT stream to run out of my phone directly um, into the system, which I can then access as part of a routing template. So of course, we could take SRT sources really in from anything that can generate um, an SRT source um, out. Not just SRT, RTMP, we have integration with LiveView um, as well to allow, us to, to allow us to do that, but really simple and, and really flexible. But what I'm actually gonna do is, I'm actually gonna do a recording using this media that's, that we've got coming in. So if I want to do a recording, I can do crash recordings. But I'm going to go in here, I'm going to select a particular ingest template that we have. In this case, for XDCAM 50, I'm not going to do a five hour recording. Um, I'll just go do a five minute recording in here. And I'm going to go in and just call this Carmel GVs because this is what we are going to work on um, today. So once I've done that and set that up, um, all I need to do is just pop that into record. And you see in a few seconds, there it goes, that media is then recording. I've got an on-screen display that's showing me information uh, about the feed that's coming in. It's also giving me you know, a countdown clock and a, um, and a lapse clock um, as well. So I can see all of that that's going on just now. So that's Media Central Stream, really simple, very straightforward, enabling me to ingest in. And the important thing here is the stream that's coming in on the fly is now being converted uh, into a stream that I can use in the house codec format that I want to use within the system itself. Okay, so there's no break in the workflow. It's all very simple and straightforward. And of course, this media is now available for anyone using the system to actually come in and to access. So let me just hop back into Collaborate and begin to show some of the things that we can do here. So in Media Central Collaborate, you know, what are the kind of things that we can do? Well, there's different roles involved in Media Central Collaborate. The first one being the planner role. So I'm coming in, maybe I'm working as someone who's planning a job, perhaps working on an assignment desk for certain things as well, or you know, I'm planning a shoot, for example. And so we have what are called topics, which I see down the left-hand side, and then we have assignments, okay? So a topic, if you like, is the overall you know, job that we're going to cover. Maybe it's a show, maybe it's an episode for a, for a show. And then inside that, you then have assignments. And then with those assignments, you perhaps have different tasks. Now you can see here, I'm displaying this in a calendar view, so I can see the next week uh, ahead. I can also display it in a list view, so I can just see a big list of all of the different jobs. And we also have lots of filters. So for example, if I only want to see my own stuff, I can filter to only show my own stuff. And you can see here, it filters lots of things back out as well. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna go into the Carmel behind the scenes uh, topic that we're gonna work on. And what I see inside that is there is already one assignment. And if I go into that assignment, what do we see? Well, you see here at the right-hand side, we have what's called a task. And this is where I can go in and I can task a user to do something. And then in the middle here, we have what's called a container. And this is where I can begin to gather all of the different content that I'm interested in um, that's related to a particular you know, job that I'm, that I'm doing. 
as well as having the media here, we also have the ability to have notes. And this notes area here, it's actually like a shared document. It's like a Google Doc or you know, a shared doc in one, in one drive where multiple people can all work in here. So say, for example, you're the person that's planning the shoot. You want to go in and put in some information. You know, the, the crew come in. They want to add some information in. They can all actually work together here um, simultaneously. You also have the option, if you want to, you can make these private um, as well. So that's the overall concept of, you know, a container and, you know, an assignment. So let me go back here and show you how I can go in and create uh, an assignment that Michael and I um, are actually going to go and work on. So here I'm going to create a new assignment. And so what is this assignment is we want to put together. An end. OK, very basic and simple. I can put in here a due date. So, you know, it's due for today. We're doing it as part of the, the demo here. And also what I can also do is I can allocate team members. So I'm just going to quickly go in here and search for Michael, for example. There's Michael. Let's put him in here. And I'm also quickly going to search for myself if I type my name properly. There we go. And I'm just going to save that out. Now, you can also see here the top right hand side that I again get notifications because we have notifications in the web app. We also have notifications inside a media composer um, as well. So I get a little notification here because I've assigned myself to this job. You also see it here. And if I click on it, you see it tells me I've got a new assignment. And if I click on that, it takes me directly to that assignment itself. Now at the moment, of course, you know this is blank because there's nothing in the container, but I'm gonna create a couple of tasks. So the first task, is going to be to create a rough cut. And again, I can set a due date and I can actually set a time for this um, as well. And I'm going to allocate team member to me. So this is going to be for me. So that's fine. So I'm going to do that. So again, you see here, you know, I get the notification telling me I've got this as well. But I'm also going to go in because I want Michael to do a bit of work. It's not just about me doing things here. And I'm going to tell Michael to finish off the edit. Now, again, here I've got the due date and time. Again, I can go and allocate Michael to this particular job. I can also type in more information here as well. So I give him a bit more of a description of what it is that I actually want to do. And you'll also see here that we have a status area. So for example, here for creating the rough cut, because I'm doing this, I'm gonna mark this now as in progress. And that then updates everybody else who can now see that the work I'm actually doing is in progress itself. Now, what I want to do just now is I'm simply going to go back in here and I'm very quickly going to do a quick search on the last 10 minutes because what's that going to show me? There it is. You know, there's the recording that I set going in Media Central Stream just you know, a few minutes ago. If I double click on that, that then load um, into my um, you know, video player here um, and that's then going to allow me to, to begin to go off uh, and to work on the feed. So there's the feed coming in now that I want to go ahead and work on. Cool, that's fine. Now let me go back to collaborate because one of the things that we spoke about earlier on was if I want to share content, well, maybe I want to share the rushes here that, with Michael. So I can simply drag and drop them. Now I could drag and drop it from the browse app. I could do it from the, um, uh, the search app just to add it into the container. But you can imagine if you've got you know, a lot of rushes that you've come back in, a lot of camera shots and things like that, you can just put them in here, gather them all together. This is just creating a link, okay? It's not creating any new media um, or, or anything like that. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is in Media Central Cloud UX, I can also do some editing. I mentioned earlier on about the different roles that you can have. So in here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a sequence. So this is the Carmel. Okay, so let's go ahead and create that. And that's gonna give me a blank sequence that, that I can use, because of course I've been tasked with doing the rough cut. So that's fine. Now, this is not going to be the most exciting edit that you've ever seen in, in your life just because of the, the time constraints of the, uh, of the demo itself. I'm just going to pop in a couple of shots. But in Media Central um, uh, Cloud UX, um, you can have multiple tracks of video. I could have up to four tracks of video, eight tracks of audio. Uh, I can do some um, uh, basic effects in terms of things like transitions and dissolves. I can also see here I have access to things like the weightlifter and the scissors tool. So, you know, I can do three point editing um, uh, as well. But let me just go ahead and, and pop in another uh, bit of a shot from, from something a little bit later on. 
that's here. And, and I can drag and drop into the timeline, you know, or I can um, uh, use keyboard shortcuts to, to enable me to, to do that as well. Okay, so there we go. There's a couple of shots in the timeline, as I mentioned, not the most exciting edit. I can, of course, play it back and review it um, for what we have here as well. But really what I want to do now is, you know, I want to begin to hand this off to Michael. I've been talking for quite a long time. So, you know, I'm going to get Michael involved. So all I'm going to do just now is just quickly save this. And then same as before, I can drag and drop this in and add that into the container. So, you know, Michael knows that it's directly here and it's available for him. And because I also went in and created this task and gave him, um, you know, a task as part of this, he should also have received a notification. So, Michael, at this point, uh, I'm going to be quiet for a few minutes uh, and I'll hand it, uh, hand it over to you. So if you want to take things away. All right. Thanks. I'll take a look at that amazing cut inside of Media Composer. Let me go ahead and share my screen at this point. So hopefully everybody can see Media Composer. This is the uh, one of the latest versions of Avid Media Composer. So you can tell because you can go in and lock and dock your panels. But just so you can see, this is the Media Central panel that uh, Craig had open. And uh, if you haven't seen this before, you know, any panel that you bring up inside of Media Composer, you can actually have it floating or dock it into your UI and create a workspace. So everything you've seen Craig do is going to be very familiar because that is being seen right here as a panel inside of Media Composer. You have the apps across here that you can uh, take a look at. Um, we have the, the Collaborate app, but I do want to point out that the little notifications here does come up. So I'm seeing that there is a, a new task which uh, Craig has gone in and put together right here. So if I do double click, you'll see that the exact same window with the sequence and the clip is now available to me. And I can go in and see, all right, he tells me to go in and finish off the edit that he has created. So I'm gonna bring up a bin right here. Let me first take uh, this clip and bring it into Media Composer so we could go in and you know view what he did capture here. Uh, yes, it is some nice shots of Carmel. It would have been nice to see Craig's nice backyard here. Unfortunately, if I did a stream, it'd be the route, uh, the five freeway outside of the Burbank office, but you don't want to see that. We'll also bring up the sequence that he wants me to work on. So if I double click here, you'll see these two amazing cuts that uh, he created, and we'll go in and make some changes here. We'll go ahead and grab this clip. Uh, just mark an in and an out. You know, this is Media Composer. So if you are familiar with Media Composer, it's not going to be uh, any new learning curve to go in and edit. But again, having the functionality with uh, the Collaborate uh, tools with Media Central is going to be really great to be able to see that. Now, I am working on this sequence. You may notice or remember that there is a way to go in and say, I want to go and add a... Uh, a little notification to say that I am going in to add um, that I am working on this. Uh, let's see. If you, if you double click on the double click when it says finish off the edit, Michael, it it'll show, it shows you the task and allows you to update the status. Thank you. So now you'll see that that is new. I want, do want to say that that's in progress. So just as uh, Craig had gone in and said that he was in progress for his task anybody can see that. So people will be able to see that I am working on that. So I could go in and add some more, you know, some effects, some dissolves. I could make this, you know, a really nice feature. We're not gonna spend time and have you do that. But I do wanna highlight some of the features that are in the latest versions of Avid Media Composer. The uh, first thing I wanna do is bring up uh, titles. Now you will notice here in my uh, titles or graphics bin, you'll see actual titles created. If you haven't seen this before, with the new Avid Titler Plus in uh, Media Composer, when you do create titles and go to frame mode, you actually see your title. You see the representation. So there's no guesswork when you go in to add a title to your sequence. So I'm simply going to highlight a portion of my sequence here. I'm going to grab, let's grab this title, just drop it right on top here. We'll just take a look and see we now have that added to the sequence, oh, maybe not that one. Let's go ahead and grab this one and drop that one here. Okay, that's a little nicer. I'm gonna go ahead and render that into the sequence. Perfect. And some other things we may wanna take a look at are uh, things like 
inside of the bin. If you are going in and you are in a different view, again, you have your text view, you have your frame view, you have uh, your storyboard view, but we do have ways to go in and align your clips inside of your sequence as well. So if I'm in a bin right here, here I have some frames, you could go and move your clips around, but if you right click and go to your uh, snap to grid function, you'll see currently snapping to grid is disabled. We have four different modes here, disabled, temporary, enable, and invisible. Enable does bring up a nice little grid system, so it's an easy way to go in and align your frames. Uh, invisible will just make the grid invisible and you can align them. But I actually like this other one, which is called temporary. And what that means is initially, you have free form uh, movement of your frames, unless you hold for a couple seconds, then the grid pops up and then it will align. So it just gives you a nice way to go in and uh, line up your frames. So a lot of people like to go in and group their frames uh, nicely. It lets you go in, just create a nice little blend or nice little view to your uh, frames when you are putting them into your uh, bin. Now we also have some other really nice things. You'll take a look at, you know, if you are scrolling through your bins and trying to move around and look at your frames, if you go to the bin map or show bin map down here, you'll actually see you get a little Google map view of your bin in the upper right hand corner of the bin. You can actually make that larger or smaller. So you can easily navigate. If you have hundreds of clips, it's just a nice way to go in and get an overall view of your bin and be able to click around it without having to slide back and forth. And you can turn that on and off. The nice thing about that as well is if you have a sequence, uh, again, this isn't a very big sequence. We'll just go ahead and zoom in a little bit. But we do have the sequence map here as well, which is also that same type of view of your sequence, but you can actually bring it up in a little window. So you can be zoomed into a tighter part of your timeline and then just bring up the sequence map to actually be able to navigate around that. Now in your timeline settings, there is a way to go in and say to, instead of having the sequence map be overlaid on the timeline, maybe have it float as a panel. So now when I bring up the sequence map, it comes up as its own window, its own panel that you'll be able to navigate around. And this is dockable. So you can take that and put it into your UI if you want. So another nice way to go in and view your clips. A couple of things I do want to show as well. Uh, I'm sorry, Craig, I'm going to take a little bit of time for this is things like going in and doing a bulk edit or change to the names of your clips in your uh, in your bin. Just going to go ahead and change the size here of the frames. You can actually go in and you know change the size of the bin columns. But you'll notice that I do have some uh, clips here that have maybe dot copy, dot new. Uh, I want to get rid of the copies at the end of here. These could be copies of clips. They could be transcodes. So I could go in and do a bulk edit of these clips that actually will let me go in and change the names of them. But I actually want to go in and do a find and replace. This is a modal piece of a, a tool that can go in and find and replace any sort of word inside of your string of text, just like a Word document. So I want to find any dot copy dot one that is in any name. You'll see it actually highlights in your bin. The first instance is orange. I could say replace and it starts eating away at that, but I want to replace all of them. I hit replace all. I've just taken out the dot copies on all of those rather than having to go in and do it individually one by one. We're just helping taking out some of that extra tedious task of going in and renaming things. And a couple other things I want to do before I hand this off to Craig. And actually, instead of doing that, I'm going to say, all right, let me go ahead and check this in to production management so Craig can prepare this and I can say, all right, it's ready for review. I do want to show that as you go into your different tool sets, you can bring up different tool palettes. And these tool palettes, if you've seen them inside of Media Composer before, are an easy way to go in and add special keys to a window or a menu. And now these tool palettes can also be docked into your UI. So you can create a nice custom tool palette and access any sort of buttons or customized things that you'd like to add. And on top of that, if you go to your command palette, 
you'll see that we do have all of these buttons, but trying to find any of these buttons can also be, you know, take a little bit of time to find. So we now have a new quick find button or feature inside of the command palette, where if I wanna find any of my trim features, we type in the word trim, we select which one we're trying to look for, and it actually highlights and brings you right there. I could spend you know, hours going through Media Composer. That's not what this is about. This is about collaboration. But I do want to say that, you know, take a look now, Craig. I think I've gone in, uh, saved that sequence. Uh, oh, another feature, sorry, I do want to talk about uh, as far as collaboration is SRT. Secure Reliable Transport is now a function and feature inside of Media Composer Ultimate and Media Composer Enterprise in the latest versions of Media Composer. So you'll see that above the timeline, you have your little hardware and software tool where if you right click, you'll be able to see SRT and I currently have it selected. Going through and configuring this, configuring it with an IP address, a port, could be a password. We can take a look at the High Vision Hub and this is actually High Vision we partner with to be able to create this technology or if they created the technology, we're actually using it inside of Media Composer. And we can go in and see right here, the uh, application or the hub, which lets me go in and administrate and set up the routes to being able to play out or stream the output of Media Composer to a cell phone, to a hardware device, to VLC. So you'll currently see that I have my Composer setting on I want to play out to a mobile app. I think, Craig, you I sent you already the QR code or the URL, so you should be able to access what I'm playing out. As you see that right here, you get all the information on the right side as you configure any tool or any outlet for your output. And then when I go into Media Composer and enable SRT, and all that is is turning on SRT by clicking, we do get a little red blinking light on here, which says it's now active. I think Craig should be able to see what I'm playing out on his mobile device. So Craig, this gives anybody the ability to go in and do sort of like a review and approval of what is being played out for Media Composer at any time. So a really great way to go in and collaborate. Yeah, Michael, that's exactly right. I mean, if you look here now, I'm seeing on my mobile phone, there's the, you know, the graphic that's come up, the output directly from Michael. So, of course, at the same time, I could, could be looking in here and say, OK, Michael, maybe go back a few frames. So we're back at the start of the roundabout there, just a few frames back. Yeah, maybe we want to blur out, you know, the, the crossing sign there. And I'm seeing this in real time. Uh, from Michael's device. So, I mean, it's really, really cool that uh, we can do this all in all in real time um, by using the uh, SRT Streaming Out feature in Media Composer. Very, very cool um, itself, Michael. Thank you so much. You bet. So, Michael, the other thing that you did there was, um, you know, you checked that sequence back in. Um, so, you know, maybe I'm, I'm not available. I know I can't look at something immediately um, on my mobile phone, even doing the, the, the streaming out. So, you know, one of the workflows we can have, of course, is like synchronous collaboration, like we were doing there at the same time. But we could also have collaboration where, you know, maybe I'm not available. I want to come and look at something a little bit, a little bit later on. So Michael's marked his sequences for review. So let me go into um, Media Central Collaborate again um, and just show you what I'm now seeing, you know, at my um, side of things as well. So I'm going to take over the share. And uh, if I share that screen. So here I'm looking at Media Central Collaborate. So I can see here now that Michael has marked this as for review. So I can see here it's for review. And there is the sequence which I've now loaded up um, in my timeline. And if you remember in the sequence, Michael, you know, he added in um, an extra shot, you know, in the middle of the of the timeline itself. Um, he also added in, you know, the graphic. Now, I appreciate on Zoom, if you're looking at this, that, you know, the playback probably is a little bit choppy, but, you know, the playback is, is, is smooth for me here. So I can come in and I can then see, you know, there's the graphic that Michael has added. Um, you know, it comes into the, the, the shot. There's the shot going through the roundabout that I was looking at in real time, you know, just a few seconds um, ago uh, as well. And that, of course, then allows me to do, you know, a whole load um, of other things that potentially I would want to want to do with this, this sequence. You know, so maybe, you know, we've got something done now. I could come in and say, OK, I'm happy with this. So this is now marked as being approved. So, of course, everyone can now see that this particular um, thing itself is approved. And so what I could do with this, of course, is 
I could then transfer this somewhere else. So perhaps I want to send it to um, uh, a playout server, for example, maybe we're doing some studio work, um, or maybe I want to transfer this into you know, a bigger playout system or send it to archive uh, or something like that. I can do all that within um, Media Central um, itself. Um, or perhaps what I want to do is actually take this content and perhaps distribute it to you know, a, web, a web CMS system. So that's also something that we're also able to do um, here um, inside um, uh, Media Central Cloud UX as well. Now I'm just going to quickly come out to pop into another system just to show you this. Um, that you know, here I have access to what's called Media Central Publisher. A Media Central Publisher is a way of taking content that you have on your system and then distributing that, perhaps to social media, perhaps to a web CMS system, for then you know for for it to be done through further further use. So I have access to exact same content. I have access to everything that's done inside of Media Central Cloud UX everything that's done inside of Media Composer, and I could take it from here, and I could publish it directly to a social media platform. You know, I could send it to YouTube if I wanted to. I could send it to, you know, Facebook or, or to Twitter, or I could send it to something like, you know, Brightco, for example, if I want to have, you know, sending it to, you know, a CMS or, you know, some other hosting platform uh, but, uh, that we want to want to go to. So, Let's just have, you know, there's been a lot of stuff that we've covered um, in the course of the last, you know, uh, 25 minutes or so. So let's just do, you know, um, a little summary, um, really, of what we were, what we were looking at there. Um, so we started off by looking at Media Central Stream. So simple solution for IP streaming ingest. And what I didn't mention is Media Central Stream also now supports Playout as well. So, you know, one of the ways that we would phrase this is we can stream in from anywhere into our creative tool set, and then we can play out to anywhere using Media Central Stream. It's a very, very exciting product and, and really the one something that's worth, worthwhile checking out. We've looked at Media Central Collaborate, you know, enabling teams to work together regardless of location. So one thing I want to point out is that I'm here in the UK, Michael is in Los Angeles, the system that we've actually been using for all of the work that we've done is actually an AVID headquarters in Burlington, just outside Boston in Massachusetts. Okay, so it really is about, I could do this if I'm working in my own local system, of course, but I can also do this by uh, enabling different workflows, even with those kind of distances involved. It's available on web. It's available on, on mobile. I'll maybe get a chance to show you a little bit of that later on. And it's also available as a panel in Composer um, or in the Adobe Creative Cloud products. And Michael obviously gave you, you know, a great demo there of, of some of the new things in, in Media Composer. So, of course, it's fully integrated with that Media Central workflow. And, of course, Michael also then demonstrated that great um, streaming uh, workflow as well. We're streaming directly from his Media Composer in our office in Burbank directly onto my mobile device to allow me to, to view and to, and to watch that back um, there um, as well. So from this point of view, that um, really completes in terms of uh, what we wanted to do in terms of the demo. Um, so now we're going to go to uh, a Q&A. Uh, and at this point, I'll stop sharing so we come back on camera. Uh, and I'll hand back over to Angel, um, who hopefully has got some, uh, some questions for us. So um, uh, Angel, do you have any questions? Uh, and I'll hand back over to Angel. Um, who hopefully has got some uh, some questions for us. So, um, sorry, uh, Angel, do you have any questions? Uh, and I'll come back. Okay, sorry about that, guys. That was a streaming playing back. Great, great, great uh, presentation, Michael and Craig. Craig, we have one question here for Michael. Michael, is SRT streaming out from Media Composer limited to just sending to a cell phone? Uh, no, not at all. I mean, you can go to a cell phone, you can go to a VLC player, you can go to other hardware devices, I think a Makita device. So uh, yeah, I mean, you, you could stream it out and, you know, be sitting on a couch and watching it on a large screen uh, television, if you'd like, or, or in a conference room, if you have a, you know, a group of people who are trying to collaborate or see the output while the editor is working in at the facility. So basically, you could stream it out to anywhere. Great. It's Excellent. probably also worth mentioning, Michael, as well, that it doesn't just have to be point to point. You could stream it to multiple destinations. So, you know, you could be streaming it to, you know, someone in New York, someone in Los Angeles, someone in London, for example, they'd all be able to see it at the same time. Absolutely. Yep. Excellent. Thank you, guys. Craig, I have one for you here. Is Media, Media Central Collaborate limited to just this kind of workflow or could it be used for news or sports, for example? 
Yeah, it, it's really designed to, to, to work for any type of workflow. Um, so in, in news terms, a lot of people talk about story-centric workflows these days where you've got a story that um, you're going to distribute to multiple different destinations. You know, it's not just about the item that you're going to do for the, the six o'clock show or the 10 o'clock show. And so Media Central Collaborate really is that way where in a news environment, you could bring everyone together where the core content is the same. But of course, we're creating different content for the different platforms. So, you know, it absolutely can be used um, in a news environment and, and also for sports, really anything where you want to do a bit of planning, a bit of tracking, a bit of assigning jobs and tasks to two different people um, and then track the progress of it. And that container inside of, you know, Media Central Cloud UX that, that we were using to, to share the content there, you know, I could have master clips, sub clips, sequences. We looked at notes that you can put inside there. You could also have uh, images. You could also have PDF documents, Word documents. You could even have things like Premier, um, uh, After Effects projects, for example, you know, can also be there. We talked a little bit about the integration with After Effects and Photoshop. Um, you know, you, that gives them access to all the content. They can, same thing, get tasked with jobs, update the status. So it really is all about collaboration. Um, and it really spans a whole range of different workflows. Anything needs planning, tracking, um, and, you know, it's a big area of focus for, for us at Avid. Excellent. Thank you. Um, Michael, this one's for you. Yes, do we need to be working remotely to do all of these things or could I do them on-prem? Uh, no, I mean, you could be doing this on-prem as well. Um, so, you know, if I was working on-prem in Media Composer, I'd be able to see any of the stuff coming in through Media Central. Um, I could be playing out through SRT. So all this stuff with Media Composer could be uh, on-prem as, as well. So yeah, you're not limited to uh, just being remote. Excellent, very flexible. Great, um, one more question for Craig. Uh, can you tell us a little bit more about the setup you need to be able to do this? Sure, of course. I mean, that's something that's, that's kind of common that, that in terms of a question that comes up, but how are we actually, how are we actually doing it? So, so obviously Media Central um, uh, Cloud UX is part of our you know, Media Central family of, 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 sort of products and solutions. So what we've got here is we've got what's called Media Central Production Management. That's our asset management system for managing just a live production that we that we have. And then of course, everything is underpinned by our Avid Nexus, Nexus storage. So as well as that, we then have you know, Media Central Cloud UX, which is the web browser that we spent most of our time um, um, looking at um, as well. So the kind of fundamentals are you know, Media Central Production Management, um, um, Avid Nexus um, storage, and then you have that Media Central um, Cloud UX uh, sort of layer um, with it um, with it as well. Um, as we're talking, actually, Angel, I can see a question that's come in um, on the on the Q and A. One from uh, I know some of the the other guys have been answering questions as we went, but one that's coming from Michael Ferguson. So, Michael, thanks a lot for for sending the question in, asking if the software can be used with other editing um, apart from Media Composer. Well, the answer is yes. Um, you may or may not be aware that there is a Media Central panel available for um, Adobe Premiere Pro. I, I met, talked a little bit earlier on about After Effects and Photoshop, but there is a Media Central panel um, available for, for Premiere Pro. And that gives um, users um, in that system access to all of the content that's inside of the Media Central production management system. It also has access to Media Central Collaborate. So, you know, the same kind of thing, I could go in, I could task a user who's using Premiere Pro uh, to do a particular job. They could go in and they could access and then work with the, the content that's there. So um, Adobe Premiere Pro, uh, After Effects, uh, Photoshop um, are supported um, as, is, as is Media Composer. So, so Michael, hopefully that, uh, that answers your, your question there as well. Do um, should we? There, there were some other questions that came up in the Q and A. Should we maybe just cover those, just so that people who may not have seen what the questions and answers were might? Uh, yeah, please do, Michael. Yeah, yeah, go for it. Because uh, Kent and uh, some other people have been going in and answering them. Um, question from Benjamin: Are other browsers supported, like Firefox, Safari, and Edge? And uh, currently, we are only supporting Chrome at this point. Um, Michael uh, Ferguson also asked, are you guys going to support other browsers at a later time? Um, and uh, it was, I'm not sure the current status, but uh, if you're not aware, we currently have an iOS app for Cloud UX and Collaborate. So that, that may be helpful. 
Um, yep. Another question came up. I mean, people may have heard about Avid Nexus Edge, and this is uh, what's the difference between Media Central and Nexus Edge? So, uh, I mean, they're, they're actually two very different systems. Um, and this is you know, going off of what uh, Kent had answered. Media Central is based off of a database in the back end where Nexus Edge doesn't use a database, but it actually works with your media composer projects and your Nexus workspaces, which is great. Um, Nexus Edge is remote editing capabilities with Media Composer as well. So you have remote access to your Nexus workspaces and you'll be able to view proxies remotely if you are remote, or you can work with the high res when you're at the facility. But the idea is being able to collaborate across the different systems at both times. So that's another uh, session. We do have a lot of uh, videos and webinars online available for Nexus Edge. So definitely take a look at that. Um, uh, on top of that, the question was, is this just for Media Composer Enterprise? And you don't uh, need to use Enterprise with Media Central Production Management, which we had here, but it is a requirement. Uh, enterprise is a requirement for Avid Nexus Edge. Yeah, um, so Michael, there was one other question, which was uh, about how do you check something into production management? So a couple of different ways that you can do it with the way that Michael did it as he right clicked in the, the record monitor and selected check into production management from there. You can also do it from a bin. You can check in from a bin. You can check everything in from a bin um, uh, as well. Um, the advantage of what Michael did, because he was working on the same sequence that I had checked in earlier on, then all I had to do was open it and collaborate and then you know bring it in from, from, from there. Um, one of the questions that um, uh, you sort of mentioned earlier on, it was mentioned in one of the answers, um, and we didn't get around to showing it um, in the in the demonstration, was actually about Media Central Collaborate on, on an iOS device. So let me bring that up just for a couple of minutes, just so, so everyone's aware that that's um, you know, something else that we can also do. So um, what I'm doing just now is... I'm just reflecting this onto my onto my phone. So this is my you know this is my iPhone that I have. I have the Media Central Collaborate um, app um, on it, so I can see all of the different topics. Um, I can also see the assignments that uh, that we have. I also have the ability to filter to again just see you know the things that um, you know I've been allocated to, for example. And if I go into that Carmel behind the scenes one. You know, here um, I've got a couple of different things. I've got that driving shots of Carmel where I can see the task that was created earlier on and I could update the status and change the status um, for what we have. Um, and then we have, you know, obviously what Michael and I were doing. So, you, know, you know, there's the couple of assignments that, uh, that we have. Um, you know, it tells me that this is for me. I don't know if you can see it on here, but there's a little blue circle around um, what, we, what we have here. Um, and also what I can also do here is I can go into it and change the status. So as Michael did, you know, I could go in and say, okay, so this is now complete, for example, and that would update things back in the main system itself. And I also have access to the media, you know, so something else I could also do on my phone here is also play back the media as well. So this is different from the streaming that we looked at coming from SRT. This is, you know, something um, where maybe at a later time I want to go in or I want to look at something or earlier on I want to look at something. Michael's maybe not doing some work on his um, uh, uh, Media Composer at the time, but he's done something um, earlier on. So the Media Central Collaborate app for, for iOS, you know, has a lot of those kind of capabilities. I can also create new topics and assignments um, directly here as well. So again, it's all about that kind of workflow that you can have either in the office or something that you can have, you know, really um, on the go um, that you can do um, on a mobile device um, as well as being able to do in the web app or in Composer um, or in, you know, Photoshop um, as well. So um, Angel, were there any other questions? No other questions that I can, well, this one actually just came in. Is the okay. shirt available in the iOS app thinking of a PA logging clip during travel? So um, at this point, the, the note is not available in the iOS app. Um, it's available inside the web app, but not in the iOS app at this point in time. Um, I mentioned earlier on that Collaborate is a very big area of focus for us. So, you know, we will have new features and functionality that will be coming out 
um, as we go through the rest of this year and, of course, into, into next year. But as things stand today, no, there isn't um, a way to, to, to do that within the, within the iOS app itself. But uh, Dominic, you asked the question. Thank you so much for that. I'll obviously feed that back to our you know, product management teams uh, to make them aware of it because it sounds like it would be um, a neat workflow and something that would probably, um, probably help you out. There also was another question that came in that uh, Kent had answered. Uh, what's the optimum internet upload speed needed to control and access Media Central? And uh, we recommend a five megabit download because um, we're really not uploading media to Cloud UX as, uh, as was answered. Yeah, yeah, exactly, uh, exactly right. And, and with that, I think we've reached the end of our presentation, gentlemen. Yeah, Angel, that's, that's great. Thank you so much. Um, um, Michael, first of all, to say to you, thank you very much for, for your help. Angel, thank you so much um, as well. Um, if you want to find out more, um, you can, of course, go to the Avid website. So you can obviously go to find out more um, about Media Central Collaborate. A lot of resources there uh, in terms of you know, videos that I've put together and some you know, more detailed information about some of the additional things that we haven't had the chance to, uh, to, to show you in the course of today because... You can do resource management. You know, you can also access people and contacts and things like that um, as well. Um, so please check out the Avid, the Avid website uh, to find out more inf information on that. Also check out Avid on social, you know, our, our various different social channels, um, you know, whether that's on, you know, Twitter, on Facebook, YouTube, lots of great information that's there um, as well. Um, but for the moment, what I'd like to do is to thank everyone for, for joining us. Thanks to Angel and to Michael for all their great help uh, today. And I hope you enjoy uh, the rest of your day. Thanks very much and goodbye.